Hey, this is Thomas and today I want to talk about Xcode for Windows. And this title is a little bit sensational, isn't it? Because there is of course, uh, of course no Xcode for Windows because it's just a sole macOS application. So it's not possible to install it on a Windows machine. But um, the topic is still quite relevant because there are actually a lot of people who wants to start out with iOS development but doesn't have a Mac. So um, I want to talk about all the alternatives you have in this case. And the first alternative is installing macOS on a non-Apple machine, which is possible um, both natively and in a virtual machine, but it's not a good idea. And there are two reasons. Uh, reason number one is it's not working very good. And reason number two is it's not allowed by Apple's user license agreements. So yeah, you simply must not do this. So it's not an alternative. The second alternative is developing non-native apps. And for example, web applications. And it's possible to develop a web app on a Windows machine and that can be run on an iOS device. It's possible, but um, it's not a good idea. And there are two reasons. Reason number one, uh, you can't run it directly on, uh, you can't deploy it on an iOS device from your Windows machine. And you also can't um, upload the app to the iOS store. So for that you would need, um, for, for both things you, you need a, a Mac. And the second, problem is, and that's even more important, uh, non-native apps suck, period. And the performance is very bad, the user experience is very bad, and don't do it. Um, yeah, quite simple. So um, we talked about two alternatives, both are not very good. So yeah, it looks like there is no way out. But there's one thing that is actually possible. And it's all about your objective. If your objective is to just start out learning iOS development, then you can start by learning Swift. And you can learn Swift on a Windows machine because you can run Swift code on a Windows machine. Uh, Swift is open source and there are compilers for both Windows and Linux. So it's possible. And there are even websites where you can uh, run Swift code in your browser. And that's also very good to, to start out. And as I said, um, for learning Swift, that's perfectly fine. So um, at the beginning, you don't need a Mac. Of course, at some point you want to write iOS apps. You want to learn developing iOS apps. And then you, of course, need a Mac because the alternatives I've talked about are no good alternatives. And one last thing I, I want to talk about is uh, buying a Mac because um, for developing iOS apps, you don't need the newest and quickest machine. Well, performance is always good, no question, but it's perfectly fine to, to have an older machine. So uh, you could buy a used Mac or you can buy a refurbished Mac, which is available on the Apple store, which is a little bit cheaper than a new machine. So yeah, there are alternatives. Okay, um, all in all, the alternatives are very bad. There are no alternatives. And the only way out is to start learning Swift on a non-Apple machine. And yeah, at some point you need a Mac. Uh, you can find the links uh, to all things I talked about in the description down below. Um, also the link to the corresponding blog post. If you liked this video, uh, click the subscribe button down below and thanks for watching. Take care.